Hi guys, it's Damo here, and I'm in Mildura on the banks of the mighty Murray River. We're set to take in the prospective magnificence of Aprilia's Tuareg 660. It's a sunny day here, which in and of itself is an unusual event in Australia in 2022. And we've got a full day of riding to find out what stings and what ranks on this much awaited machine. Let's go. Aprilia first teased the Tuareg back before most of us knew what the hell a wet market was. Jumping ahead to 2021 and we saw the final shape the bike was to take and I remember thinking it looked a lot like a John Mayer album. But now the Italian has hit dealer's floors with its 659cc parallel twin that offers 82 horsepower and 70 newton meters of torque mounted between a Kayaba fork and shock, both with 240 mils of travel. Yes, numbers can be fun, but they don't mean all that much and riding on the road is boring. So let's head into the dirt or the sand as it so happens. Sand is one of the natural enemies of the adventure bike, along with red clay, grey clay, kangaroos and La Nina. The immediate feel from the Tuareg 660 was comfort and control. Thanks in part to the 21 inch front wheel, it handled the light sand with ease and the smaller bumps were soaked up as though they were figments of my imagination. But we were to test the Aprilia in a situation many adventure riders would do anything to avoid. Sandy single trail, and I mean single trail. So confident were the folks from Aprilia Australia that the bike would impress that we were given free rein to go play in a section of trail more suited to a 350F. With some trepidation I entered the trail and expected to find the bike's limitations within the first few corners but I rode and I rode and I rode on for kilometres in completely stock trim of course and while the suspension undoubtedly felt softer than you'd want for this kind of riding it was handling it all much better than I expected and the engine was giving me a sweet soundtrack of a deep growl with an overtone of induction that sounded better than anything that I've heard on the radio since 2005. The bike's ergos allow you to move freely back and forward, and while the tank is a little slippery, the profile right down to the foot pegs is thin, making it easier to hold the bike with your legs. The foot pegs themselves are pretty decent, and looking over the Tuareg, it's hard to find many details that Aprilia hasn't thoroughly thought through. That seat, for example, is the longest enduro-style seat I've ever seen, and while it's fairly slender, it's also very comfortable, so you're getting the best of both worlds. The reason the bike works so well in this sort of trail is that it's superbly balanced, thanks in part to the design of the fuel tank, which carries much of its load low, with a clever distribution between the front and the back. And that Kayaba kit is incredibly versatile, and when you take an overall view of the bike, it really is the star of the show. That said, riding an adventure bike in single trail is kind of fatiguing, and I was getting a bit of arm pump, so I duck out back onto the road. But I couldn't resist for too long, I had to duck back in. It's just too much fun to ride this Tuareg 660 and this type of stuff. So I'm curious as to what you guys ride. Would you mix up some of your more open adventure style riding with some enduro type stuff just like this? And if so, would you consider buying the Tuareg? Are you looking at something like the Husky 701, the 890 or the Tenere 700? Let me know in the comments. I'm really keen to hear what you guys have to say. The 660's engine isn't what you'd call a bolter. It offers a supremely manageable output that excels in techie stuff, but shows its versatility when it winds out to hit some more than decent speeds, which the bike handles with outstanding stability. And that's the gift of the Kayaba and an excellent chassis. What makes this bike fast is not the engine, it's the handling package. And I'm really, really happy a kangaroo didn't make a cameo in this section. And just for reference, I was riding in the off-road mode and I had ABS turned off both at the front and the rear and I was riding without any traction control engaged as we were going in and out of deeper sandy stuff. And of 
course, even though we were riding in the outback, I somehow managed to find some water and I have to go right up. It's a bit slippery in there. One, one more. One more. Come at you that way. Come back around. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'd like to say I was peer pressured into doing this, but actually there's something kind of wrong with me and I just love riding through mud, no matter how slippery it gets. And this one was really slippery. And just to make sure that I found the best lines, I went back in. And I went again. And I went one more time. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> of course, that's not a true test of an adventure bike playing around in single trails and mud puddles. We did ride a lot of open trails, which is where you'll spend a lot of time on an adventure bike mowing down those long miles. Now, of course, we did stop to play around a little bit. But for most of the day, we did ride trails and tracks that looked more like the average adventure ride. So I did get the feeling that the Tuareg is very happy to eat up long miles. It is very comfortable. I didn't change anything with the ergos. If I had the bike again, I'd probably roll the bars forward. But honestly, that's all I needed. We left in the morning and came back during late afternoon. It was a long-ish day and no one really felt too beat up. I had a bit of arm pump from coming through that single trail, but the bike was comfortable. It was good to be on all day and that's really important for an adventure bike of any capacity. For guys coming off dirt bikes who are looking at an adventure bike for their next purchase, there are some really good options that keep you in that enduro feel. You've got your Husqvarna 701 Enduro, your 890 Adventure R KTM, of course, and the Tenere 700 from Yamaha. And the Tuareg 660 has a bit to do to prove itself as a reliable and durable motorcycle. But if it does prove to be, it'll have its eyes squarely on that Tenere 700. And Yamaha has a little bit to worry about here. This is a very good bike. Hi guys, it's Damo here on the banks of the mighty Murray in Mildura. Today we're set to take in the perspective. Can I do that again? Yeah. Perspective. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Damo here. I'm in Mildura on the banks of the mighty Murray. And we're set to take in the perspective magnificence of Aprilia's Tuareg 660, the long awaited, long awaited. Eat my ass. <laughs> hey guys, it's Damo here. I'm on the banks of the mighty Murray in Mildura. And we're set to take in the perspective magnificence of the Tuareg 660. Oh, 